Good evening. I am bringing everybody up as quickly as possible, and we'll get started. My internet has been strong. So if I go off camera, that's why. It's because okay. everything got jittery and I had to turn my camera off. It just happened to me right now. <clears throat> Understood. Okay, I believe all of the commissioners have been promoted to panelists. Um, unfortunately, Commissioner Thompson is not well tonight and is not able to attend. Um, we also have a newly uh, appointed and sworn in commissioner, Commissioner Barry, is now representing 4B10 um, and is with us this evening. She has been sworn in by the councilwoman and is prepared to participate in tonight's meeting. So we have a very busy agenda. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We'll call the meeting to order. And with that, I have to pull up my agenda. Um, with that, we'll start with a roll call. Um, so Commissioner Gilligan, Gilligan, can you do a roll call, please? Sure thing. Good evening. Uh, let's just run down uh, numerically. 4B01. Present. 4B02. Present. 4B03. Present. 4B04. Present. 4B05 is present. 4B06. Present. 4B07. Present. 4B08. Present. 4B09 is absent. And 4B10. <coughs> present. It's okay. We see you. <laughs> Okay. Uh, that's a quorum. Yeah, we have, uh, we have nine. Wonderful. So with that, I'll give everyone instructions for participating in a virtual meeting. Um, by now, I think everyone sort of knows how it goes. However, we ask that you use the raise your hand function. We ask that you dial star six if you are on the phone and need to be taken off mute. We will acknowledge you and give you the floor. We ask that everyone who is participating in the meeting use their name. Um, we will not recognize guests that don't use their name um, as a way to control uh, getting Zoom bombed, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, next, we'll move with that um, and go to election of officers. Each January, we have to elect officers. Um, this year, we have asked former commissioner Brenda Parks to perform the election. And so I will elevate her now and we'll go with Get started. <laughs> Commissioner Parks, are you there? just elevated her a second ago, but I don't see her. Can you hear me now? Yes, we okay. can. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Floor. Good evening. Okay, we all know this is the beginning of the new election year for 2024. 
of all of our ANCs and the elected officers for commission are the chair, the vice chair, the secretary, and treasurer. So we're going to get started because I'm looking at your agenda and it is very long tonight. So therefore, do we have any nomination for chair tonight? I would like to nom nominate for BO8 Commissioner Allison Brooks for chair. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> going once, going twice, going three times. ANC Commissioner Chair Brooks is the chair. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a nomination for vice chair? We do. I'm going to nominate Zurich Smith. Okay. Any more nominations for Mr. Smith? Going once, going twice, going three times, seeing none, Commissioner Smith is elected as vice chair by acclamation. Do we have a nomination for secretary? I'd like to nominate Commissioner Palmer. Is there any other nominations? Going once, going twice, going three times, Saying none, Commissioner Palmer is elected secretary by acclamation. Do we have nomination for treasurer? I'll nominate Evan Yates. <laughs> is there any other nominations? Going once, going twice, going three times, seeing none, Commissioner Yates is elected treasurer for acclamation. And I went fast because, like I said, our <laughs> commissioner, I met Chair Brooks, said a long, a long menu tonight. So <clears throat> finish. I now hand it over to the duties of our Commissioner Brooks. Thank you. Thank all. you very much. And it was good to have you back, Commissioner Parks. I know it felt good, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is nominate a representative to the Walter Reed CAC. And I nominate Commissioner Colson. Are there any other nominations? Okay, going once, going twice, going three times. Commissioner Palm, uh, Colson, congratulations. By acclamation, you are appointed to the Walter Reed CAC. Uh, next. We need to have the consideration and approval of the January agenda. My notes here. Too many screens open. Give me one second. Okay. Um, everyone should have a copy of the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions? Okay. Given that there are none, the agenda is approved as presented. We can move on to the approval of the November regular minute, minutes. As you all know, we did not meet in December, so the minutes were from November. Everyone should have a copy of the minutes. Are there any corrections? No. Hearing none, then the minutes are approved as presented. Next, we need to have a 2024 meeting schedule established. I will read the dates, uh, the proposed dates for the year. The commission meets on the fourth Monday at 7 p.m., except for the months that we're on recess. The commission has decided to recess in July, August, and December. So the meeting dates would be as follows. Monday, February 26th, Monday, March 25th, Monday, April 22nd. We need to shift mm -hmm. the May meeting to a Tuesday because that Monday is Memorial Day. So we would meet on Tuesday, May 28th. We would then meet on June 24th. Again, be recessed in July and August. We would meet Monday, September 23rd, Monday, October 28th, Monday, November 25th. Then we would recess in December. And the last meeting that we will schedule would be Monday, January 27th, 2025. Are there any objections to the meeting calendar? Okay, hearing none, the meeting calendar is approved as presented. Next, we have the approval of the ANC security fund. Um, 
<clears throat> I believe the resolution is on the website. Each year, excuse me, each year the ANC is required to vote. Chair, Chair Brooks. Um, yes. I did want to raise one issue with the meeting calendar, and I hope it's not too late and you won't find it out of order. I wanted to flag that we've had this issue come up before that uh, Monday, April 22nd is uh, the start of Passover. Oh um, I thought we had checked for that. But I will note that the 29th is a like there is an additional Monday in April if we wanted to look to that as an alternative date. Does anyone have a concern, question about making the meeting Monday, April 29th? I did come up with that solution right on the fly, but as I was looking at the dates, I did note that that was the it's night that Passover <laughs> begins. And that's a pretty significant holiday for yes. people who. So, because we're going to modify the date that I presented, let's take a vote, please. Is there a motion to change the meeting date from April 20th to, I'm sorry, April 22nd to April 29th? I'll yes, I'm good. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. A second. I second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That's everyone. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Commissioner Yates. Um, security fund. So each year we're required to vote to accept the security fund. In effect, that is our insurance policy. Um, against fraud. So um, the fund shall secure that the ANC wrongfully misappropriates and loses funds by the chairperson, the treasurer of the ANC for any unpaid operating expenses that don't exceed the amount of the loss or do not exceed 50% of the ANC's fiscal year annual allocation, whichever is less. The fund, however, shall not be liable for any loss resulting from an expenditure, whether or not legal, that was authorized by vote. Monies from the fund shall be payable to the ANC only upon written application to the fund and signed by the majority of the members of the ANC and approved by the ANC Secretary Fund, Secure, excuse me, Security Fund Board of Trustees, which is the board, which is us. Um, do we have a motion to approve the Advisory Neighborhood Commission 4B's participation in the ANC Security Fund and to authorize the expenditure of $50 to participate in the fund? I so move. Thank you. And then Commissioner Colson, you're a second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, did I see everyone's hand? I think I did. Okay. Commissioner Colton, did you raise your hand? And I missed it? No? Okay. So all you're in favor. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Good. Thank you. That's everyone. Um next then. Next on the agenda is the treasurer's report and the quarterly financial report for the first quarter of 2024 is listed on the re report. I will note that these reports are completed by the office of the ANC and they've not provided the report as of yet. Therefore, we can't vote on it. Commissioner uh, Smith, do you have any other treasurer's update? None at this time. Okay. So what then will happen is they will provide us with the the first quarter report, and we'll put it on the agenda for February and vote at that time. All right, next, commissioner updates. Let's just go in numerical order. That makes life a lot easier for me unless there's some pressing matter. So let's go with 4B01. First, I want to start by saying thank you to everyone at 4B01 for their uh, constant communication and support during our water issue. I really appreciate the community coming together. In terms of update, we will have another neighborhood cleanup on, I believe that is the third. Oh, sorry, I was in May or April because of Passover. We were just discussing that. Yes, February the 3rd at 10 a.m. and more information to come. If you're interested, please shoot me an email, uh, 4B01 at anc.dc.gov. That is it. Thank you. 4B02. Thank you, Chair Brooks. Um, I just want to thank Commissioner Yates and community members who showed up for our community cleanup on January 13th. In honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Weekend of service, we had great turnout and cleaned up around Tacoma Elementary School. Um, I will be holding my monthly cleanup. Um, one second, let me pull this up. 
on my February monthly cleanup will take place on Saturday, February 3rd at 10 a.m. I always hold my cleanup <laughs> on the first Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. We meet at Van Buren <laughs> Tiny Branch by the Safeway. Um, this will be the 15th monthly cleanup that I've held by the Safeway. And it's there's a lot of need there. So if people are interested, please come out. Um, also want to flag my monthly office hours, which will take place Thursday, February 15th at 6 p.m. This month, we'll walk around and focus on talking about um, the status of and support for local small businesses. Thank you. You're welcome. 4B03. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to uh, put everyone on notice that um, I will be holding, um, well, I will be announcing uh, soon, maybe I'm, I'm sure sometime this week, uh, my next 4B03 uh, meeting, um, as well as my, I don't like to call it rat walk, but that's pretty much what it is. I know it's snowing, but um, I have had residents uh, to request that, so I haven't forgotten. And so I will be announcing that once everything clears. So um, that's, that's all I have for now. Thank you. 4B04. My internet's unstable, so I'll skip an update at this time, Chair. Okay, thank you. 4B05. No update for me, Chair. Thanks. Thanks. 4B06. I just wanted to thank everyone who uh, in 4B06 who came out to our January safety meeting. Um, for those who weren't able to make it, the recording is on uh, our website, uh, and I will put the link to that in the chat box. Thank you very much. 4B07. <laughs> thank you, Chair Brooks. Uh, just two quick updates for 4B07. The first is that we are holding a single member district meeting uh, next Saturday, January 27th at 10 a.m. at the Lamond Recreation Center. And um, neighbors can also expect my newsletter for February out in early February, most likely the first week, or the week of the fifth. Thanks. Okay. Um, 4B08, that would be me. Um, I have actually several updates. So let me go to my notes here. Um, one sec. First of all, let me apologize for all of the coughing. I haven't been coughing all day and then suddenly I get on camera and I'm coughing incessantly. So for that, I apologize. If you're not receiving notifications uh, from our website for this meeting, we're gonna ask you to sign up. I've dropped a link in the chat uh, for everyone to um, go to the website and sign up. I think that would be useful. Uh, also, on February 10th, we're hosting a crime prevention training and resource fair at 6200 Kansas Avenue Northeast, which is Friendship Ideal Public Charter School or Ideal Friendship, excuse me, I don't know which one is the right way to say it. Um, and we're hoping that everyone will come out. We're actually going to have some de self-defense training, uh, hopefully at this meeting, that everyone will find useful. Um, next, I am looking for 4B08 volunteers for a cleanup along Riggs Road. Uh, a date has not been determined because I don't have enough volunteers yet. Um, so I'm looking for that. And then lastly, I'm holding an SMD meeting on Thursday, I'm sorry, Saturday, February 3rd. Um, I will email everyone the, uh, the link uh, so that they can participate. It's possible that I'll do it in person. I'm trying to find a location that will allow us to participate, use their space on a Saturday. So I can get back to you um, with regards to that. If you are not receiving emails from me and you would like to, please email me at 4B10, 4B08, excuse me, at anc.dc.gov and I'll be happy to add you to my distribution list. I wanna double back for a second to the crime prevention training and resource fair and just mention some of the organizations that will be present. Um, we will have representation from the camera rebate program, AAA, to talk about defensive driving, MPD, Office of the Attorney General, DACL, HZEMA, which is um, the Emergency, Emergency Management Association. Um, we're hoping to have a, a raffle and distribute some air tags um, for residents to put in their car. We know that MPD has not begun to distribute air tags in Ward 4 yet, so we're working on making that happen. Um, if not, then we'll try to raffle a few off ourselves. Okay, that concludes my update. And so we'll go to 4B10, 
Commissioner Barry, welcome. Why don't you tell everyone uh, what you got going on in 4B10? Oh, thank you for having me. And this is obviously my first meeting, but I just want to thank everybody that. Commissioner Barry, I can't hear yeah. you well. And I think that's probably the case for everyone. You might need to speak up just a little bit. Okay. Oh, uh, can much you hear better. me? Yeah, much okay. better. Okay, well, I want to say thank you for everybody that helped me uh, sign the petition to make you commissioner. Uh, there's not a lot I have to report right now since I just started, but I heard a lot of people's complaints and concerns. So if you would like to email me, you can email me at 4b10 at anc.dc.gov, or you can call me um, at 202-525-7033. And I'll be reaching out to the Lamont Riggs uh Citizen Action Group and Lamont Community Assist Action Group. Um, I know we're having a meeting on January 30th, so I'll be there for that and uh, be able to talk to you guys more and to hear your questions, concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you again for having me. That's thank you. All right, with that, we'll move to community concerns. You'll have one minute. Um, sure. Commissioner yes. Brooks, mm -hmm. really briefly, if I may, my internet came back on, so I do have one brief announcement, if I could. Sure. Um, I wanted to advise the community that uh, the DDOT is going to be constructing a sidewalk on the even side of 6900 block of Willow Street Northwest, closing a, closing a critical sidewalk gap there. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, there's a sidewalk only on one side of the street, and that's a heavily trafficked area with a school in the block. Um, I did want to note um that what that was in response to a resolution from the commission uh um one of them in which we uh flagged uh priority sidewalk gaps um within uh the area 4b 210701 mm -hmm. was the resolution on that and i wanted to thank the the lead author of that resolution commissioner palmer um, who co-sponsored that along with me, Commissioner Brooks and Commissioner Johnson. That actually reminds me, there are sidewalk gaps being filled on 3rd Street in my SMD. Well, actually not my SMD anymore. Sadly, that's now 4B10. Um, Commissioner Barry, that's my old, part of my old uh, area. So I guess I'm still used to calling it mine. But there are sidewalk improvements uh, on the even side of the 5900 block of 3rd Street Northeast, as well as the 6100 block of 3rd Street Northeast, the even side. And those are scheduled to come up under the same um, Priority Sidewalk Act that Commissioner Yates was referencing. I'm looking to see if I have a date, but I don't think that I do. So when they'll get started. No, but two, three days in advance, they'll put up no parking signs. So when you see the signs go up, know that that's why. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we can move on to community concerns. Again, please use the raise your hand feature or star six to take yourself off mute. Okay. Um, don't see any residents with their hands up. So we will move on from community concerns and hear from Sophia Ticola at the mayor's office. Oh, I'm sorry. One hand just went up. Two hands just went up. Ms. Griffin, you're being promoted to talk. And Tamira Benitez will be promoted after Ms. Griffin. Ms. Griffin, are you there? Ms. Griffin? Okay, did I? Did, yep, did I there you are. Okay. When you were talking about the streets where there are going to be sidewalks, <clears throat> yes. I, I think one of that is this behind my house. Mm -hmm. My address is New Hampshire Avenue. But behind mm -hmm. my house, if it's the same address on Third Street, um, the 6100, um, mm -hmm. there's a tree in a large part of my yard that is on that area where I guess a sidewalk would be. And no one has said, I haven't heard anything about putting a sidewalk there. And I just be very 
interested in knowing how much of my yard will be taken. So it says it's going to start at 6114 and go through 6199. So I don't even know if that's the portion that's closest to your house. Um, and that's a question that I, how much of your, of the grass that rolls to the curb, I can't answer for you. I'd have to talk to DDOT about that, but that technically is not your yard. That is the, the sidewalk space. Okay. Well, I, I'd be fine with that, but I would okay. still like to know how much of that they're going to. Okay. Let me remove. connect you. Let me There's connect you. There's a big tree there. Mm -hmm. Are they going to cut it down or, you know, I'm, I just yeah. be concerned. What's First, let me come out tomorrow and drop by and see where 6114 is in relation to your yard. And then after that, I'll connect you with someone at DDOT and we'll get the answers, okay? okay? Because none of the houses in my block face Third Street. They all face New Hampshire and their addresses are all New Hampshire Avenue. Mm -hmm. None of them have a Third Street address. Mm -hmm. I understand. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Samira Benitez, it's nice to see you. <laughs> I'm coming back to y'all in a yes. different capacity as your neighbor. Yes. How's everyone? Uh, thank you so much for giving me some space here to connect. Uh, two things I wanted to share with you. Uh, one of them being extremely grateful for all the work that y'all do. ANC does not get paid, and yet you have to interact with 180 different district agencies and <laughs> do a lot of connecting us and making sure that government agencies do support us residents and provide life affirming services. So thank you for all you do. Uh, the second part is, uh, or the second point is, I just wanted to hear from the mayor's office uh, about a plan to address uh, snow management, so snowstorm management. I did notice that this time we didn't get uh, salt in the streets and uh, snow cleaning was... Uh, lacking in many spaces. I know that Ward 4 does get some attention, but I'm, I will be concerned about other places, other areas in Ward 4 and other places in the district that do not get as much attention as some words. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to hear uh, what happened there and what's the plan moving forward so that we can get the proper support. It was extremely dangerous during MLK to be out. Um, my car almost flipped once, cars in front of me almost flipped. Uh, I know that Rock Creek is not uh, part of uh, the city, but it was a mess in there. But as you know, the mayor mm -hmm. has a connection to federal uh, government, just making sure that, you know, we continue that advocacy to making sure that streets in there, roads in there are safe for us since we district residents use those roads. That's it. Thank you so much. And Very pleasure welcome. to see you all. You too. Good to see you. So that's actually a good lead-in. Um, we're going to move into, because there are no other questions uh, or hands raised, I'm going to move next to uh, agency reporting. And uh, first on the list is Sophia Ticola from the mayor's office. So I will promote her now. <coughs> Sophia? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How is everybody doing? Wonderful. I'm sorry, my camera's off. I'm recovering from being pretty sick this weekend. Um, but to start off with snow team, thank you for that. Um, first off, thank you to the commissioners. A lot of commissioners reached out and community members about areas of concerns. And so to give people an idea of some of the things we do um, is as mokers, specifically talking to commissioners, but then also during the snow, we started on MLK day and then we went throughout the whole entire week of putting our eyes on the road, talking to community members and letting our sister agencies like DPW and DDOT and OUC know which roads are bad and which roads need an extra layer of salt and different things like that. Another thing to bring up is we have our snow tracker. And so I will put the information um, into the chat to share, but the snow tracker, if you click on it during the day when we're having snow, you're going to be able to see 
where our trucks have gone, whether it is for plowing or for putting down salt to give you an idea of the areas and what time they went and where they went. And then also at snowteam.dc.gov, you can also sign up if you want to help with supporting our seniors for snow team in addition to that. But one of the things for snow that happens is we have our snow team with DPW that will, they work 24 seven tracking the snow and they don't go out to plow the snow until all the snow is on the ground. However, they do go to salt prior to the snow coming down. And so that gives you an example of you're like, hey, why aren't the snow plows out right now when all the snow is falling is because they wait for it to all come down, but the salt team does go out prior to that. And then also um, for DC water, because as we experienced this week with freezing temperatures, some of our pipes were leaking. And one of the things we did was partner alongside DC water and H SEMA as well well as ANCs. Um, thank you, Commissioner Colson, for that, for getting those informations on, hey, there's issues, things are leaking, or we're not getting enough water, and we are alerting our community members to make sure that we have a plan. And so that was a very big thing that we focused on. Um, but I also really opened the floor if there is ever any concerns, whether it's like, hey, I don't think that this was done properly, please let us know. So there's always a way for us to bring back to those agencies, especially if we're hearing that the roads were dangerous and icy. I was driving our truck and there was definitely places that were icy. And so I can only imagine if people, I mean, I slipped while walking. And so I want to make sure, and I know in our administration, we want to make sure that everyone is staying safe. So in the future i can also send my phone number here once i'm done talking with everything if there's ever a place where you're like hey this is a problem area we need someone here right now please let me know and i will make sure the proper agencies are shared and given that next up is also as a reminder to sign up for alerts. And these alerts are going to let you know, similar with the DC water notice, or hey, it's hyperthermia weather, or snow's coming. And if you sign up at alert.dc.gov, you're going to get all of that information, which is very imperative to also keep an eye on, say if you see someone sleeping outside and they need resources and, the alert.dc.gov alert via your phone was like, hey, it's too cold for them to be outside. I know I did that recently today with we have someone living unhoused over on Riggs Road to make sure that she got the resources she needed over there. And then next up is Mayor Bowser unveiled the FY 2024 Small Business Enterprise, which is called the Green Book. And essentially, this green book is going to give you <coughs> those best tools for supporting local businesses. I'll send all the links in this. And so if we know of uh, people who have small businesses in D.C. and looking for more resources or people who want to start up a small business, I definitely advise checking out that book because it has some of our top all of our top resources for that. In addition, the application for our summer youth employment program starts January 22nd at noon, and the deadline to apply is Wednesday, March 6th. I know it's one of our biggest programs throughout D.C. for our youth, and so I want to really make sure that all youth have access to apply for it. And then we also have our leaf collection. Um, again, thank you to so many of the commissioners on this call who have shared when leaves aren't getting picked up, I know that it has been a source of concern and we want to make sure that 
these leaves aren't blocking our drains, especially as we continue to have winter type weather and we want to keep our drains free from all the leaves and making sure that our sidewalks are accessible. So currently leaf collection is <coughs> in section B and we are advising everyone in section C to rake your leaves in the tree box by January 28th. And then, um, yes, Commissioner Palmer. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Oh, I can wait till you're done. Okay, thank you. And then also, we have Mayor Bowser launch our task force. We've talked about it a little briefly. But as a reminder, if you have an idea to share, and so sorry, this task force is talking about the shaping the future of gallery place in China downtown. And so when we're talking about our sports downtown and BC sports, I know that there have been a lot of concerns about that and what happens next. If you have ideas and you would like to share them, please go to be downtown dot dc dot gov that's be downtown dot dc dot gov where you can share your insight there of ideas and then last we have our winter hiring fair which will take place tuesday february 13th 2024 at 10 a.m to 4 p.m at mlk library and so this will be the winter hiring fair for all things dc to get an idea of some of the opportunities there you can go to careers.dc.gov or you can text winter to <laughs> excuse me 69866 and that is all i have mr palmer okay commissioner palmer <clears throat> you want to ask your question yes thank you chair brooks um i just wanted to raise three issues um, related to the snow, um, I've noticed some icy and snow ridden sidewalks around the Tacoma fields and the area surrounding um, the schools on that large set of blocks. Um, the fields just don't seem to be shoveled consistently at all. And when there's multiple snow events, it piles up. So um, in addition to talking about roads, um, I'm hopeful that there's some action to address those sidewalks. And I think there's some confusion about which agency is responsible there. Um, the second the second issue I want to raise is um, the issue of errant shopping carts, which our commission has worked on. Um, we've noticed a very high number of Walmart carts lately. Um, <clears throat> and I have a resident... I guess I think he might be in Commissioner Yates SMD now, but was previously a 4BO2 resident who just goes about picking them up regularly. Um, and we'd like some help with that, um, pressuring particularly Walmart to be more diligent about their shopping cart collection so they don't end up everywhere. Um, and finally, an issue that I've raised before and I continue to receive emails from residents about is the lack of coordination about utility work and parking limitations. And it seems like one project is done and another one starts and there's no coordination among entities conducting work that requires um, parking limitations. So putting in a plug for a more centralized system for tracking and managing um, those parking efforts. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, and then for the sidewalks, when we're looking at sidewalks by any type of school or a facility owned by DPR, that is going to fall under DGS and specifically it's DPW essentially coming out, but DGS is who is in charge of picking that up. And so that was something that we were doing this week specifically on friday we're going over to all the dgs properties throughout our wards to identify all of those sidewalks so thank you for sharing that i can definitely make sure we get somebody out there tomorrow as well and then with the sidewalks um i know i have the contact information for the walmart manager um because we've had this conversation with shopping carts before and we don't just want them to all go to the landfill which is what happens if dpw picks them up but we can definitely have that conversation and the utility work with parking limitations talking with ddot um about making a plan for that thank you commissioner yates 
Yeah, I also had a question that came up from my constituents about the snow response. I understand the mayor's decision to close schools was based on safety concerns. Am I understanding around that, around transportation for students and such? Yes, and then also with looking at sidewalks. Um, Day. And I'm the... talking about. I'm sorry. Are you talking about both days, or are you talking about one or the other, at Commissioner Yates? I I assumed it was a safety driven decision, but I just wanted to confirm that because I didn't actually see it articulated anywhere. And that's what I told my constituents. Yeah, safety, um, not just for the students going on the sidewalks, but for our teachers and staff who are driving to school, our parents and guardians who are driving to school and wanting to make sure that everyone is safe. And if it's not a safe time to be on the roads early in the morning um, and throughout the day. Yeah, the, the, the follow up question I had then is I heard from other district government employees who work in like non mission critical roles at places like the Department of Energy Environment or the Department of Employment Services who didn't get telework that day or get told to work from home because the district government opened on normal hours. Why do those safety concerns not apply to them? And what were they supposed to do with their children while the schools were closed? Yeah, so from what we received as government employees was a very lenient, you are able to work at home if you so choose. And so I can find the exact verbiage um, that I received and share that, but I could also look into the officialness of it as well, because that is what I received as a government employee. So they, just so you know, the ANC emails are on that list and it said that people could use their annual leave is what it said, mm -hmm. which doesn't help, like obviously disadvantages members. Okay, thank you. I, I can confirm also as, as a D.C. government employee, I got two emails, one on my D.C. government for my job and one for ANC, and the commissioner is correct. I was also then also verbally told by my direct supervisor that telework was not an option, that has never been an option for weather-related events, and that liberal annual leave would be authorized. Thank you. Um, I must have read it improperly. And so my apologies on that. I will go back and make sure that I get the exact statement for that. Thank you, Commissioner Gilligan. Hey, um, thanks. First, thanks, Sophia, for joining when you're under the weather. Appreciate uh, you being here. Um, just the one one piece of feedback on the leaf pickup. It's the second year in a row that the uh, on on Eighth Street Northwest, which is right on the boundary um, of the different zones. Um, they it's the second year in a row that they've they've raked the leaves out of the tree box into the street, and then they don't pick them up. Um, and so then you just have the street full of leaves, which is the worst of all cases. I think um, better just leave them in the grass in that case. Um, so and and you know I gave uh, DBW a heads up about that this happened last year in advance of this year's leaf pickup, but that didn't do any any good. So I just wanted to provide that feedback to you. Absolutely. Um, you said this was for Eighth Street Northwest. Yeah, it's on the western boundary of uh, one of the zones. Okay. Do you know the one hundred block by chance? If not, no worries. Yeah, it starts at Paul and goes north from there. Okay, thank you. I'm going to reach out to our head of leaf collections to see if we can get someone out there. Um, I assume that that area is pretty snowy right now with leaves. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sounds like we're all coughing. Um, <laughs> I'll point out that I also received emails about the poor condition of the sidewalks, specifically on the New Hampshire Avenue bridge. Um, and so um, it's unclear who's responsible for the bridge. Is that the city? Is that um, National Park Service? Is it federal? No one seems to have an idea who's supposed to clean it. And so therefore it doesn't get cleaned or cleared, uh -huh. I think is the better way to say it. I also think 
This is a DOB related issue, I know, but there are lots of properties in the area that are vacant, not blighted, just vacant. Houses that are for sale and those sidewalks are not getting shoveled and those are the responsibility of the owner, I know, but there has to be some mechanism for DOB to find them or make them aware that their responsibility um, because we had four properties on one block. So one whole side of the street didn't get shoveled. Yeah, no, that is very important to highlight. I will bring that back. And then also with uh, Commissioner Johnson and Commissioner Yeats of what was the reason that the schools were closed, but the rest of government employees were told to take their leave. So thank you for that. And then also uh, Commissioner Barry, nice to meet you and see you virtually. All right, let's move to commission, I'm sorry, to Councilman Lewis George's office, <laughs> Barbara Rogers. Oh, I'm sorry, it looks like, excuse me. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. It looks like Commissioner uh, Parks has a question, so I'm going to elevate her again. Oh, she took her hand down, so I don't know what that means. Commissioner, if you still have a question, feel free to raise your hand. I'm promoting Barbara Rogers and Brenda. And uh, like Sophia, I am recovering from a cold and I guess it's wearing its ugly head tonight at this meeting. So for that, I apologize. Commissioner Parks, are you there? If you are, take yourself off a of mute. Ms. Rogers, are you there? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, the snow on 8th and Peabody, if the address starting from uh, 8th and Peabody is 6001, and you're going north towards um, um, Piney Branch, 8th and Piney Branch down there. They, that's where they did not pick up leaves. Thank you. And I uh, just for a clarification, you started off with saying snow and then also leaves. Are you talking I mean, about not snow, but leaves? They did not pick oh. up leaves starting at 6001 8th Street Northwest going north towards uh, 8th and Piney Branch. Okay, thank you. And I had another question, but it took me so long to get off mute, I forgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, uh, yeah. Commissioner. Yes. Ms. Rogers, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? I can. The floor is yours. And I just want you to know you have three minutes. Uh, I text you. <laughs> um, yeah. I am sorry that my camera is not, not working. My I have to get my uh, uh, computer repaired. But Happy New Year to the 4B commissioners. It is, I think I missed a meeting um, but yeah, it's so glad it's always a, a, a fun time to be here at the 4B meeting. I want to say congratulations to all of the new officers. And again, thank you all for all you do. Welcome, Commissioner Barry. She is my new ANC commissioner. So I look forward to um, working with her as well. I will probably only do three minutes, just a few updates. Um, listen as we climb events um, um, will actually begin this week. Um, council member has done these regular sessions since 2020. She will be holding these community meetings in every neighborhood in Ward 4 this January to hear from neighbors and gather community input to shape our work and legislation oversight and the DC budget. So for 4B, we will have Tacoma and Manor Park. That will be on this coming Thursday, 6.30 to 8.30 at Coolidge High School. And then we will have the Lamont 
uh, Riggs Park and South Manor Park. That one will be on Saturday, February the 3rd um, from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Lamont Riggs uh, Lillian Huff Library. So in the past, the feedback we received from the Listen As We Climb meetings from our neighborhood and our ANC commissioners has actually led to tangible legislation and budget investments on issues like abandoned vehicle, clean corridors, small business support, and conflict resolution. So we are hoping um, that um, we will see you all there. We're looking forward to your input. Um, SNAP expansion update. Good news, 140,000 DC residents, one out of every five DC residents will be getting an increase um, in SNAP food assistance thanks to a budget amendment Council Member Lewis George introduced in the DC budget this year that's worth nearly $40 million. There will be thousands of families, children, and especially our seniors in our community who had their SNAP's benefits reduced um, by Congress earlier this year. Um, with many more now receiving only $30 to buy groceries for an entire month. Um, next, we have DHS announced that the increased SNAP payments will begin on March 1st, while retroactive payments for the months of January and February will be paid out on January 23rd. So if you know of a senior or someone that receives SNAP, please tell them to please keep their eye um, on the notices that will come in the mail. And as I mentioned early, this is uh, performance oversight time um, that will be discussed at our Listen As We Climb. Last week, performance oversight hearing started at the DC Council. This is when DC residents can testify in front of DC agency leadership and the council about how they want to see DC government to improve. The council encourages ANC commissioners and neighbors to review the full schedule of the hearings and I will put, I'm happy to put that in the chat. And finally, if you don't get our newsletter, please sign up at ward4news.com. Um, we put out a newsletter every Friday afternoon. And we can also now text the newsletter to you. All you need to do is just send a text to 202-286-5268. And that's all I have. Again, Happy New Year, Commissioners, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Palmer, you have your hand raised. Yes, thank you, Chair Brooks. Um, and thank you, Barbara, for being here. <clears throat> I thank you for mentioning budget season, and I just wanted to get slightly more detail on the timing um, in terms of the council members' feedback. I know that in the past, the council member has sent a budget priorities letter to the mayor before the mayor comes out with her proposal. Um, and I anticipate that our housing justice committee will propose budget priorities. Um, and I'm curious about that, the timing of that letter. Thank you. Okay. I don't know the exact timing, but I'm happy to uh, get that information and send you an email. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Smith. Good evening, Barbara. Hello. Uh, hey, uh, I have a quick question uh, regarding uh, Tacoma Rec Center. Uh, I do still, unfortunately, uh, receive uh, questions about uh, the opening or reopening, I shall say, uh, for the weight room. Uh, do we have, I know we did the walkthrough and everything last summer. Um, do we have any updates um, whatsoever as to when? Um, I guess, possible construction or mm -hmm. reopening of the weight room. Okay. Um, Will Perkins um, in our office, actually, this is his first day back. He's a new dad, but I am happy to follow up with him. 
and Sebastian from our office to send you an email tomorrow. Um, the latest they've heard from DGS and DPR um, about the weight room. So I'm happy to have them send you an email tomorrow. Thank you. Sure. So I don't want to put Mr. Dyer on the spot, <clears throat> excuse me, but we had DPR on the call. So it is possible that he has an update. And if not, I mean, he's happy to tell us that he doesn't because he didn't know we were going to ask this question, but we might be able to get some insight from him when he starts to speak. Um, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you. Um, I just received an email a little bit ago and Barbara, I did forward it to you, but mm. since you're here, I will ask, will there be a write-up of uh, last week's uh, safety <coughs> meeting um, at E.L. Haynes? I had a yeah. lot of uh, constituents that were not able to attend in person, but still wanted to know what was discussed and any outcomes. Yes, there will be. And I think there will also prop, uh, be a recording of it as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. You are free to go. I'm staying on tonight. All right. Wonderful. That way, if anything else comes up, you'll be here to address it. Okay, next on the agenda is an update from State Board of Education uh, Representative Fraser O'Leary, but I do not see him on the call. So if you're here and your name isn't posted, please use the raise your hand function. Otherwise, we will move on uh, and go with committee updates. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Palmer, would you like to give the Housing Justice Committee update? Yes, thank you, Chair Brooks. Um, we held our last meeting on Wednesday, January 3rd, um, and heard a presentation from Greg Card Cardona Saudi about the proposed affordable assisted living facility at 7709 Georgia Avenue Northwest. They will also be presenting tonight. Um, we also had a presentation and discussion with Councilmember Lewis George's legislative director about proposed legislation, the Do Right by DC Tenants Amendment Act of 2023. Um, and the commission has an item, a voting item on the agenda tonight about that. <clears throat> Our next meeting will be February 7th, 2024. Um, at 7.30 p.m. we meet virtually. All of the meeting details are on the commission's website at anc4b.com. We will be talking about our housing justice budget priorities in anticipation of drafting a an item for commission vote about those priorities. Um, and hopefully hearing about the uh, from DCHD about the District Opportunity to Purchase Act, um, which similar to the Tenant Opportunity to Purchase Act is where the district government can itself buy um, a property for purposes of affordable housing. It has not, to my knowledge, been exercised before, but they recently issued a request for proposals for a specific property, not in the area, but we hope to hear from them about the District Opportunity to Purchase Act um, and if and when that is used. Um, so just a reminder, February 7th, uh, it's always the first Wednesday of the month at 7.30 p.m. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Yates, would you like to give the uh, VZ committee update, please? Oh, it looks sure. Like... We okay. held. Can you hear me? Can, yes. Okay. All right. I went off camera again in hopes that that would restore some stability. Um, the Vision Zero Committee held its first meeting of the year, January 17th um, at 6 p.m. Uh, we discussed uh, two of the items that are on the agenda uh, here tonight, um, as well as um, uh, ongoing legislative developments uh, around the STEER Act and planning for the upcoming year. Um, we held a moment of silence for um, Chris Laskowski, who is a regular committee guest um, who uh, was on staff uh, at the um, 
the council committee uh, and will be deeply missed um, after his sudden passing. Um, we did, however, uh, decide to change our meeting times going forward and our February meeting will be the first one. Our meeting on February 21st will be held at 7 p.m. instead of 6 p.m. if people would like to join us. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Palmer, do you want to give the Youth Advisory Committee update? Yes, I'm happy to do so. So we are currently recruiting for our Youth Advisory Committee. Um, this is a committee designed specifically for our young residents. Um, it's open to people who live or live in Advisory Neighborhood Commission 4B or attend a school within the commission's boundaries um, who are 12 to 18 years old. Um, we will be working on educating and engaging our youth on local DC politics, advocating for policy changes and connecting those students with resources and decision makers. If you know any 12 to 18 year olds who might be interested, we really want to hear from them. We just ask for um, an email with their name, age, grade, and school, and a very short statement of interest. It's just meant to have a general sense of the individual. Um, can be emailed to myself at 4BO2 at anc.dc.gov and or Commissioner Brooks at 4BO8 at anc.dc.gov. So please encourage the young people you know to apply. Thank you. All right, we will move into the presentation portion of the agenda. We will hear from Christopher Dyer with DPR. As soon as I can elevate him. Oh, he's not there anymore. What happened? I don't know if he had to go or if something else happened. His hand is up, so he's at the top of the list. Oh, okay, wonderful. I'm promoting you now. Oh, let me hello. Uh, hello. Let me change my background. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? Good and you. Happy twenty twenty. Oh, happy New Year. Please ignore the ANC background in the um. Well, it's the, uh, an ANC uh, meeting, so it's fine. Well, yeah, I know it's interesting. So anyway, mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen, and I'll explain in a moment. For those of you who don't know, in addition to being the community engagement manager for the DC Department of Parks and Recreation. Because I needed street cred with you guys, I actually also am now an ANC commissioner as well in Logan. So um, again, because I just don't have again. Yes, again. Um, anyway, Happy New Year, everyone. It's nice to be able to say Happy New Year again to people. Um, commissioner Barry, welcome aboard to the exciting world of being an ANC commissioner. I don't know whether to congratulate you or issue you condolences. Um, <laughs> I will echo. I will echo the praise that you guys that we all receive from agencies. Um, especially this ANC has been particularly um, good, and I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to come in and give you my annual state of DPR, because um, we have some exciting news tonight, hopefully. And um, so anyway, let's just go through this. For those of you, who, and I apologize for the commissioners who've been around, who've seen this presentation before, um, but for the new ones and for those of you who are following along at home for the first time, um, we just have to remind you that we were, sorry, I um, we want to remind you that the D.C. Department of Parks and Rec is the number one parked rank system in the country. We host programming and events year-round at 244 sites across 900 acres of green space in all eight wards. And we have annually over 100 different plus different capital improvement projects in our construction pipeline to support the district park system. So we're always busy and always excited. Uh, just a brief overview of some of the DPR sites we're aware of in ANC Tourf. The 4th and Blair Road Park, Lamont Rec, Riggs LaSalle Recreation Center, Tacoma Aquatic Center, which is very popular, and the Tacoma Recreation Center. So you guys have um, one of the busier and more active um, DPR, you know, DPR facilities in your ANC. Um, here's a quick thing for these, um, you know, we're the place of where fun happens. Here's some websites that you can look at, or sort of the, the top four or five websites if you ever want to find anything with DPR. DPR.events lists all the upcoming events at DPR. DPRprograms.com is your best bet. It's the information on all programs, including how to sign up. I will also be focusing a little bit more on that later in the show presentation. Um, DPR.dc.gov slash locations. You can find the location of a DPR facility. Also, you can go to your facility and click on the um, community center and find out exactly specifically what's happening at your site, including permits. Um, 
uh, dpr.dc.gov slash permits is also popular. And then there's the dpr.dc.gov slash DPR calendar, which has information about programs and permits at specific sites as well, if you cannot find it at the location. But I'm very pleased if you, I think if you go to dpr.dc.gov slash Tacoma Recreation Center, it'll go. But I don't want to be, I don't want to test my muscle memory on that. Um, DPR programs. This is sort of like the, the engine of the agency where you can go and register for programs. We have a lot of programs year round in four different seasons, um, and there are specific registration dates for the spring season. For example, will be March 1st and 2nd, 2024. March 1st will be the aquatic sign up. Um, we do a lot. We do an aquatic sign up one day, um, and then the other is the second day because our aquatic programs are very busy. Summer season looks like April, May 16th. Fall season is August 16th, and winter season is November 1st. And you'll notice the summer camps 2024 dates TBD. Um, please go to DR programs if you haven't gone so to sign up for account. Also, if you don't mind, go in and check to see if you can, um, if you if your account is working and you have the right passwords and everything so that when you get ready to do your summer camp registration, you're good. You can also find information on how to apply for a reduced rate for our programs, including summer camp. So all of that should be centrally located now on the dprprograms.com website, and we're very excited about that. Summer camp 2024 coming soon to a location near you. Um, it looks like, knock on wood, that we will be getting our summer camp registration in February, um, which is a little bit earlier than we've done it in the last two years. I can tell you that we do have a lottery again. We will be using the lottery system again. We've made some adjustments to it to make it a little bit more smooth on, our, on the back end and get information out to folks once you get in sooner. Um, visit dprsummercamp.com for the most up-to-date information, including registration and camp offerings. Now, commissioners, you will get an email from me once everything is finalized that you can share with your constituents that talks about all of the various things that you need to do about summer camp. We will also be offering um, walk-up summer camp registration sessions in some of the centers. I think Tacoma, or, uh, Tacoma may or may not be on the list, um, but we will be doing all sorts of stuff again so that you can get signed up, and we will have a two-week lottery this time again. Um, the other thing to talk about is ready to play. Um, our comprehensive um, you know, strategic plan for all capital improvement development for the next 20 years has been released. Please visit readytoplaydc.com to see how the plan is to see the plan and provide to continue as we do beginning the implementation. Um, this will be important to you guys because I know that you guys have sent me a couple of letters, um, especially about doing some expansion in, in more increased investment at Le Monde. Um, ready to play sort of provides you the sort of framework on how we make our decisions for the next 20 years. Finally, um, permits, obviously most popular one. Um, we require a permit for any organized picnic or activity for 10 or more participants. Visit dprdc.gov slash permits or call 202-673-7647 for complete information on how to get a permit for your special event or program. Also, please note with applying for permits, um, we do require at least Three, uh, depending on the permit, anywhere from three to four weeks, 15 days, at least up to 15 days of notice, advance notice for you to apply. So please don't wait till the last minute to apply for a permit. You can also email dprpermits at dc.gov if you have questions. And as in a last minute resort, you can always try to email me, but I'll probably refer you back to DPR permits. Also, the most, the most popular permit that you'll get is a special event permit. There's a specific special event permit form now on the site that makes it a little bit easier to sign up for permits. Um, and the other interesting piece is maintenance. I'm very pleased to report that our colleagues at the Department of General Services are now you're now able to submit most maintenance requests um, for DPR through DGS. For those of you who don't know, the Department of General Services does all of the maintenance of our facilities. So we're very excited that there are a lot more options to fill in tickets. So go to 311 if you see something. Um, so that is it for the, my presentation. Um, as the community engagement manager, I am the primary point of contact for you as ANC commissioners um, and civic association leads. So if you have questions about the agency, I am the person that you can reach out to directly. Um, for those in the community, you can also reach out to me directly as well. Uh, my cell is 202-702-9453. My email is christopher.dyer at dc.gov. And you know, I, I, I am very excited to help this is one of the best agencies in the city. I know I'm biased when I say that. Um, I really, really appreciate all the work and all the support and the emails I get from you guys. So please continue to flood my inbox with stuff. 
and I look forward to answering questions that the commission might have. And um, Commissioner Brooks, congratulations on becoming chair. Thank you. Commissioner Palmer, you have a question? Yes, thank you, Chair Brooks. And thank you so much for being here on behalf of DPR, which is an agency that I think many of us love and respect very much. Um, I just want to highlight, because you are jogging my memory, that I had sent an email several months ago about the mm -hmm. um, cork board, the public notice boards around the Tacoma Community Center and by the dog park and how they are, one of them is completely non-functional and one is like iffy. So I just want to I'm partly telling you to remind you and also to remind myself, and I'm happy to otherwise follow up by email. Yeah. Please ding me. I know I put in a request for that. I don't know, honestly, where it is in the pantheon of things that need to get fixed. I also know Thank that we owe you an answer to your um, resolution about your, your very well interesting and well-written resolution about aquatics and staffing and figuring out how to expand pools, you know, in beyond September 2nd or beyond Labor Day. Um, we're working on an answer to that and we will get one to you, but you. it is a very, it is, it would require a significant shift in how we do business and do operations because there are a lot of factors that go into that, including you know, the availability of lifeguards. So um, I look forward to getting that to you at some point. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Smith. Hi, Christopher. I guess I can just... You want to know what's questions. going on with the fitness center, right? Yeah. What? Yes. What? What is going on? Do you have any updates? I do not. Um, mm -hmm. But you're. We're getting. I think we're getting closer to an answer. Um, but I don't have an update at this time. But you have now given me the opportunity to gently nudge my colleagues at DPR to find out what the answer is. So I appreciate the question. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. There are two questions in the chat. In the I'm not in the chat. Excuse me. In the Q and A. The first question is. Um, I have emailed DPR and Josh Singer about the new lock codes for the compost bins at Tacoma Rec and have not heard back for months. I'd appreciate a response. If Can you please follow that email? Uh, can you forward that email me to me at Christopher.dyer at dc.gov and I'll get an answer for you. Anna, that's directed at you. Can you email him? Let me know. The next is what's the plan to increase the availability to learn to swim classes? It's near impos nearly impossible to get into the very limited classes that are available. Can you, for example, look into expanded summer classes at the outdoor pools or more school classes at younger class, school age classes? I'm sorry, more school classes at younger classes, at younger mm -hmm. age groups, I think is what they're trying to say. Yeah, that is an incredibly good question. Um, you know, it boils down to resource availability and capacity. Um, some of our outdoor pools um, are actually quite busy during the summer with actual, um, you know, patrons. I think we will be offering, um, returning, we will be returning to offer the very, very popular aquatics camp, day camp. I'm not sure about that. So that might be happening again this summer. We really, really try. Um, uh, we really, really try to, you know, provide as much, you know, as much service as we can. But we do understand that the pop, the programs are incredibly popular and a challenge to get into. So we'll keep working on expanding our capacity. Thank you. Um, lastly, Jenna's also a huge fan of DPR. Is it possible to have individual recreation centers list on their website when they are having open gym hours, um, when the kids can just show up and play, pick up basketballs, et cetera? We'd love to have addition to have that addition as she's sure they would like for her to stop calling them directly. Okay, yeah. so this is a good answer. If you go to the, you know, if you go to the dprcalendar.com and find out um, take a look um, by rec center, you'll see what has been permitted in each site. So if there are times that I, there are some rec centers like Raymond on third on Wednesdays has open gym for basketball on Wednesday nights. Um, but if there's not something going on in the rec center, if there's not something permitted, um, or if there's not like a pickleball thing going on at some of the rec centers of Ward 4, you pretty much can walk in and try to pl pick up and play basketball. But obviously during the summer, during summer camp, that's not going to be as an option. But try to look up your site on the rec center. I will also see if we can schedule more open gym time and have that published. Um, but again, the resource would be to take a look at the various links to each rec center. 
And it's nice to have a question from you, Jeff. Ah, anonymous attendees as most showers in the aquatic center are broken and last weekend there was no hot water at all. Okay, was this at Tacoma? Doesn't say. Did you um did you get a chance? I yeah, Tacoma, thank you. Um I will I will look into that. I don't know exactly what happened. I know that in the winter, sometimes you need to let the warm water war you need to let the water sort of run a little bit longer in order for the showers to warm up. Mm -hmm. I did not get, there might've been an outage in Tacoma, um, but I, I don't know. I'll look in and find out what happened. All right. Thank you very much. I think that covers all of the questions. Yeah. Also, if you're at the Tacoma Rec Center and you are a clock center and you see a, 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 a fountain or water or something down, um, just report it to the front desk staff. They will put in a 311 ticket and then DGS will come and try to, you know, fix um, and replace stuff. So again, you know, notify the staff there. That's the great thing about having a rec staff or aquatic staff center staff right there. All right, right, will do. Always a pleasure. Good to see you. Thank yes, you very great much. Great to see you. Thank you for having me and keep up the great work, guys. Send All those right. emails. I appreciate it. Have a good evening, everyone. You too. Bye-bye. Commissioner Chair Brooks, there's yes. one more I saw that about the in the Q&A uh, for DPR. I think it can just be right. I want to make sure not to miss that. All right. Yeah, I saw that. I'll take a look at it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Okay. Bye-bye. Next on the agenda is a presentation from Greg Cardona uh, regarding an update on the affordable assisted living facility at 7709 Georgia Avenue, Northwest. Uh, and I will bring them up. Commissioner Colson, this is within your SMD. I don't know if there's anything you want to say while I'm bringing them up. Not that you have to, I'm not putting you on the spot, but it would be the chance now while I'm doing it. No, nothing new to say. Uh, they have been with us before, so we're happy to have an update. And again, thank you to uh, Commissioner Palmer and the Housing Justice Committee for staying up to date with this uh, and allowing them to present uh, with that committee as well. So I'm looking forward to the updates. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, let's see. I believe they're coming. I see a hand raised. I'm assuming that's someone that I need to elevate. Hello. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Excellent. Thank you for having us. Uh, my partner, Zeke, is also on. I uh, elevated him first, but he didn't pop good up. Good evening. Good evening. Off I'm, camera. I'm there okay. we go. Give me one second. Okay, I think I'm on there. There you go. Now, uh, partner, uh, Usama Swati is, I believe, also on. Say the name again. I didn't hear you. Usama? Uh-huh. I see you. Okay, thank you so much. Well, that let me share screen and then Hazik will get us kicked off. Go. All right, well, ready. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> want to thank uh, the commissioners and thank the community members who are present. Also, thank the um, Housing Justice Committee and our single member district commissioner for continuing uh, to give us the space and allowing us to discuss this important project. Uh, we have a lot of information. I know that the presentation might get dense at some time, so I'll make this introduction quick and let you know why you know we're in front of you all again discussing the project. Our company, Greg and on the SWATI, we began organizing Washington D.C. In 1999, at that point in time, we were called Greg and Associates. Um, and since then, we have grown and incorporated new partners. And now we're Greg Cardona Swati. I am one of the partners at Greg Cardona Swati. Um, we have Simon Zamrodin, who is our developer, who's the um, director of development and finance. 
We also have another partner, Osama Swad, who's on this evening. So a little history about our, our company. We originally began partnerships working with district government and other development partners and some tra transformative work around the U Street Corridor, uh, Georgia Avenue, Columbia Heights. Uh, we continue to do more housing, specifically around affordable housing. Um, we continue to work with the district government. Uh, right now, we're also development partners um, in St. Elizabeth East. Recently finished the Whitman Walker Max Robertson Center uh, in Southeast and Sycamore uh, Road. Uh, we also finished the district towns on there. Still some are coming up. And so we've had a lot of experience of working the district around some transformative projects, but also really focused on uh, impactful housing development. Uh, one of the things that we have been focused on for the past few years is really around one of the most, for us, one of the most impactful development and focuses that we've uh, been involved in so far, and that is really housing and supportive housing uh, with services for district seniors uh, that currently there have not been uh, options provided for these seniors. So I won't go too far into that, let Simon delve into details around this, but we're here today to really, you know, ask for your continued support uh, around this initiative and really trying to respond to those those issues that we talk about sometimes separately. We talk about income disparity. We talk about uh, housing quality. We talk about, you know, health outcomes. Uh, we talk about uh, aging with dignity. Uh, but then really there's a, a sector that all this combines and that it really is around uh, seniors of lower to moderate income who have some health challenges, um, who are facing housing challenges also um, with some income, uh, uh, with some income uh, challenges. So we're trying to respond to a need of some of the most uh, sensitive uh, sector of our population inside the city. And, and this project for us is really a, a special because we, we, we actually, for a lot of years, our offices were housed at 7603 Georgia Avenue, which is one block south of this uh, project site. So we're a Ward 4 uh, company. We still are in Ward 4, which is Upshur Street right now. So it really is, you know, for us, really a special way to come back a block away from where we were housed at for so many years. Uh, to work with the community to deliver a project such as this. So with that, um, Simon, I'll let you go ahead and, and jump aside the presentation. Thank you, Hazik. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as Hazik has introduced, I'm Salman Zamurdi, uh, Director of Development at Gregor de Maswati. Uh, our company motto, purpose-driven placemaking and community investment, uh, we have a particular focus on providing care for our elderly population here in D.C., uh, unfortunately to say, up until the very recently, the only option that was primary for seniors who uh, eventually needed some level of assisted care, um, whether that's to take their medicine or for someone to help them bathe them, was effectively to be sent out to Virginia or Maryland in a nursing home, uh, whereby their quality of life could be expected to lower and prospectively lower their expected uh, life outcome. Uh, and I'm proud to say that we have uh, been working diligently on uh, setting a pipeline of over 500 affordable assisted living communities. Um, these facilities are called ALLCs. They are apartments that cater to seniors that uh, are primarily funded through Medicaid program. Uh, just to show you the, the great disparity in, in the current market right now, there are only about 400 assisted living communities uh, that serve Medicaid qualified residents, yet there is a prospective need for over 10,000 seniors right now that qualify for that level of care. And so, to address this, as, as I had suggested for the ALLC, is primarily going to be for seniors who are within this continuum of care, right? So as, as the furthest side, you could see independent living. Uh, there's no in-home assistance needed, but as you need progressive care, as the senior is, is getting older, their assisted living comes in as a stepping to before the nursing home to uh, have a continued aging in place option. The residents are primarily, as I suggested, funded uh, their services through the Medicaid program. And in specific, there is a DC program called the Elderly and Persons with Physical Disabilities Waiver, EPD waiver. Um, and in our uh, communities, we assist those seniors qualify for that program so that they could um, address their uh, housing needs. 
Uh, we are an income inclusive community. Uh, so what that means is while most of our residents are Medicaid qualified residents, we do have some residents that are likely within the 60 to 100, 120% AMI uh, of area, area median income that are private pay. And it's maybe that they have um, a, a managed care provider that provides the the necessary service uh, for their for their uh, ALLC state. In terms of the areas of needs that are greatest in the district, uh, we have the wards four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, and I as suggested um, uh, ward seven. We have uh, two communities, uh, one which I will uh, mention uh, very shortly, and then one that we are under construction at Benning Metro. And we would love, and our presentation today is to represent our our proposal for one that will be in the uh, ward four in your SMD for BO one. Our first community that we have developed is the residences at Kenilworth Park. Uh, this is uh, adjacent to the. Uh, Deanwood Metro community, and this provides 157 affordable apartments for seniors. As you see from the images here, this is in world class community. Uh, these images to, to this bottom left are not renders. This is the actual outcome of the design. We work with the best architects and engineers to be able to deliver the highest quality of housing. Um, we have 24-7 um, uh, front desk and security. Uh, and if you see in this top left area, we have a dining room that can accommodate all the seniors at once. So whether that is for having events or uh, organizations uh, or um, the enjoying meals together. Uh, and if you pass these doors here, we have a commercial uh, great kitchen with an exceptional chef that is delivering a uh, quarter million uh, meals uh, a given year. And uh, it's it's being sourced with fresh foods and local uh, vendors. And our communities are on par with the, the best. And, and I, I don't say that with any exaggeration in my tone. Uh, you can see at the top right, we have a whole areas for, for gaming. We have beauty salon. We have a library. We have a private kitchen where they could all uh, make food together. Uh, clubs, uh, outings. We have um, scheduled uh, uh, shuttle transportation to take them to different parts of the district, social events. And so it, it really is a, a, an honor to be developing these communities for, for our seniors. And we are very excited to um, have be working on a project within your ward here. And our proposal is to develop a, a mixed use building on Georgia Avenue. And uh, the proposal is for uh, ground floor retail and commercial use. Um, and uh, the units above would be for affordable assisted living community. Uh, they will be a mix of studios and one bedrooms with all of the services and amenities that were in our previous sister community at Kenilworth. If you all are familiar with this site, this is the intersection of Georgia Avenue and Kalmia Road leading up to Silver Spring. Uh, this area is part of uh, what the Upper Georgia Avenue Great Streets Redevelopment Plan has been working to mark as a gateway. Uh, and the DC Office of Planning has uh, released a map and a, a, a approved a comprehensive plan future land use map, which is the FLUM, to be able to uh, increase the flexibility of the residential and commercial uses within this area. And so they have adopted that the map zoning will address and rezone this area as a commercial medium density. And so what we are asking of you all, the ANC, for us to be able to deliver this uh, world-class community and retail space is to adopt that map today. Uh, and so what we have filed with the DC zoning is a map amendment so that we could 
uh, accept that zoning so we could develop the project. Uh, we are uh, scheduled for a February 22nd MAP Amendment zoning public hearing. Uh, and before that date, we would love for you all to show your uh, support uh, as we progress onto this collective mission. Uh, we would love that sometime at the end of the year or beginning of next to have a uh, groundbreaking on the project. Um, we will be working very closely with you all for the design uh, proposal. Um, and with fingers crossed, we, we were looking to hopefully be able to deliver the project towards the end of 2026. These projects are community uh, uh, engines, economic engines with uh, over uh, 80, uh, 70 to 80 uh, the permanent jobs uh, and even our, our entry level is a living wage uh, because we know that the importance of um, developing a local uh, workforce is an instrumental to a healthy community. Uh, and we work very closely with other CBEs, of which we are, uh, during the construction process and for vending vendors. Uh, we've had series of meetings and uh, we've we've been uh, um, had the honor to meet with the ANC4B's Housing Justice Committee uh, a couple of times, um, once last year and once again this year. Um, and we have also um, met with your neighboring ANC4A uh, so they could learn about this exciting project as well. And upcoming, of course, as I had mentioned, the February 22nd Zoning Commission uh, public meeting. Um, and we will have uh, ongoing meetings with the ANC, um, especially as the uh, design uh, comes up. <clears throat> we work very closely with our existing tenants on the site. Um, we have initially been working with Upper Georgia Avenue Main Streets, Jessica Millinder, um, with uh, assistance for those tenants. Um, so they have a potential temporary relocation and with the perspective of some of those tenants coming back to the building after we redevelop. Um, and ultimately the UGAMS program is being reformed. And so we have been working with the tenants with other resources um, as the DC Main Streets, SB Works, um, as well as a local real estate uh, advisory company that is going to assist them with their move outs, as well as pro bono accounting, legal and um, retail consulting. Uh, and thanks to your superstar commissioners, uh, we've, we've already been able to work together with the community. Um, uh, we had a, a end of summer block party uh, back in August. And I think if you kind of zoom in here, you could see Commissioner Palmer right there uh, holding it down for the ANC. Um, and we had different local vendors and promoting the, um, the existing tenants on site. Uh, and we also use this as an opportunity for our sister community, Kenilworth Park, to come out and uh, talk to the community members about what is to come here at this location. And we had a lot of great reception and folks who are already like, well, we can't wait. You know, I, I you know, I have a, a, you know, friend's dad is really in need of care. He would love to be in this community, maybe, you know, start him out in Kenilworth and then bring him back to his community. Uh, so so that was really great to to see. Um, and as, as I had suggested, as part of the um, Great Streets Redevelopment Plan, uh, this area has been designated as a gateway uh, as uh, the residents um, come in and out for uh, towards Silver Spring. And so we've already used uh, the building as, as a springboard, a mural, working with a local uh, artist, uh, Leonina, and uh, she was she was very kind uh, working with everyone at the block party. We all filled in a little bit, you know, pretend we were part of, part of the, the artwork. So it was fun. Um, and as part of a beautification uh, program, we've been working with our neighbor, San Miguel School of Art, in decorating uh, and um, uh, doing artwork that they have worked uh, from their community. Uh, so in conclusion, um, I first of all, thank you all for, for your, your patience and, and for uh, welcome us, welcoming us tonight. Um, just wanted to remind you all that, as, as uh, Hazik has suggested, we have a long track history of working with DC communities and ANCs. Uh, we would love, love, love for your all's uh, support uh, for these uh, upcoming um, land use map amendment, zoning hearing February 22nd, with our hope and initiative to uh, have this launched uh, 2026. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, let's start, I guess. Steve, uh, and I'm not sure if your uh, partner has a question. I've okay. tried to um, promote her twice and she's denied the request. She has to click on it. Um, Did to you try to sell it again? Yeah. Yep. One sec. Much. There we go. Oops, sorry. Thank you. I think it worked this time. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions? Would you mind taking down the, would you mind the stop sharing so I can Thank see you. everyone? Thank you. Um, a weird quirk. I know there are two questions in the chat, but commissioners, do you have any questions before I move to the chat? No. Commissioner Palmer, did you have anything you wanted to say? Um, I have something to say about the item being proposed, but not at this stage. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned before, I don't answer questions or recognize people who do not have a first and last name. So I apologize for the person that's listing questions, um, but I think I made that clear from the onset. Um, and uh, Ms. Griffin asked, what's on the site currently? Uh, currently the site is um, a uh, several uh, existing tenants. Mm -hmm. um and namely there's a progressive market and a beauty shop um and these residents uh, i mean these tenants um uh, have unfortunately uh been in a what i would call a legacy building which has has been in the area for quite some time and has passed its useful life um uh, in in many structural ways and so ultimately the building uh needed a renovation regardless um so those are do you know where those the shop and the the tenants intend on going. Yeah, so I actually have had a couple conversations uh, recently with those tenants. Um, they are working with uh, that uh, local uh, real estate consultant, as I had suggested, uh, to find areas ideally within the community to relocate. Uh, as mm -hmm. there's some uh, small uh, format uh, retail that is available along the George Avenue. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. There is a letter um, that uh, is titled Supporting and Providing Feedback on Proposed Map Amendment from MU4 to MU10 for 709 through 7723 Georgia Avenue. It's case number 2311. It's presented by Commissioner Colson, Palmer, Brooks, and Smith. Commissioner Colson, do you want to say anything or is there a resolution i mean a, a motion that you'd like to put on the floor i would like to make a motion to approve this letter i if i could possibly make some statements prior to sure the discussion of the letter yeah just an introduction of what we're voting on sure <clears throat> um i just want to highlight that the representatives from Greg Cardona Saudi have presented several times before us, including the commission's June 26th, 2023 meeting, but also our housing justice committee meetings on May 3rd, 2023 and January 3rd, 2024. And the draft letter being proposed tonight reflects those conversations and feedback from the perspective of the housing justice committee, among other things. Um, from the perspective of the Housing Justice Committee, this proposal serves the Commission's affordable housing goals. It will provide approximately 179 apartments for individuals who are 60 years and older and or disabled and 55 years or older and who are covered by Medicaid with a maximum annual income of about $30,000. Um, that's very low income and a need that we have throughout the city. Um, in addition to being income inclusive, the MAP amendment applied for here is likely to result in binding the property to inclusionary zoning plus, which has a broader affordability requirement than regular inclusionary zoning, and thereby enhances the affordability requirements in perpetuity um, as attached to the property. We've had repeated discussions with Greg Cardona Saudi about the importance of ground floor retail here. 
they've expressed a commitment to that and working with the existing tenants to help them relocate. <clears throat> they've also indicated their proposed assisted living facility will create 70 to 80 permanent living wage jobs. Finally, their requested density bonus to the MU10 zone is particularly important here because that zone specifically requires an open public plaza as part of the development. And this is crucial to the walkability and pedestrian friendliness of a gateway site like this one, um, which marks the entry from Maryland into the district. So thank you. Just wanted to make those points before we vote. Given that there's a resolution, a uh, motion on the floor, is there a second? A <clears throat> second. Thank you. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Uh, hold on, I need to keep track of all the hands. I think I see everyone. Commissioner Barry, is your hand up or are you voting? In... Okay, thank you. Commissioner Yates, is your hand up or are you voting against? No, I, I believe it articulated an I, yes. I believe I saw everyone's hand. If I'm mistaken, please tell me now. Tell me now. Wonderful, thank you. All right, we'll move to our next presentation, which is uh, Dr. Linda McKay, Executive Thank Director you. of Mary McLeod Bethune Day Academy Public Charter School. She has a petition to, to the Public Charter School Board to amend the charter agreement to relocate from the Sixth Presbyterian Church at 5413 16, 16th Street Northwest to the Tacoma Park Baptist Church at 635 Aspen Street Northwest. Let me elevate her next. All right, I don't see Dr. McKay. If I'm mistaken, would you please use the raise your hand function or if there's someone else here from the school? Going once, going twice. If you're on the phone, star nine Thank activates you. the raise your hand function. Commissioner Palmer. How do you want to proceed? I believe um, she was on the call earlier. I don't know if she. I don't believe that I have seen anyone here, okay. but I did confirm that. I mean, we know via emails that they were confirmed to attend um, and that the agenda and login details went to them by email. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty discouraging. I know that several neighbors are here to speak to this matter. Um, maybe we can open the floor. I, as you mentioned, Chair Brooks, this is about a proposed charter school relocation um, to the Tacoma Park Baptist Church, which is at 6th um, or at Aspen and Piney Branch. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a proposal for at full at full enrollment would bring 174 students as well as the associated teachers and school staff to the location. Okay. Um, and I'm I have notes to introduce the letter we will be voting on, but I would like to open the floor to people who are here, if that's possible, neighbors. Um, well, yes, we can. Um, so we'll use the same rules that we use for community concerns. Each resident will have one minute and there's no need to beat a dead horse with the same comment over and over again. Um, so if you could sort of align your uh, comments so that that is the case, that would be great. One second. <clears throat> Promoting Alexandra. <clears throat> she has her hand raised. Alexandra, are you there? Thank you. Yes, no. sorry, just takes That's a minute. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. I'm going to stay off um, camera just because the internet's been spotty uh, this evening. Um, I did just want to, I know others will be speaking to other elements of concerns here, but um, I think most important that I want to highlight is the lack of transparency with this proposed um, change to the community. Uh, first, I would like to thank Commissioner Palmer for her work on this issue. Without the commissioner's commitment to transparency and open communication with the community, the community would not have received any notice of the proposed change until after it was completed. From the date of initial notice, 
um, provided to the commissioner to now only 76 days, including three major holidays and school breaks have passed, which is insufficient notice and zero direct community engagement from the applicant when these proposed changes will have drastic impacts to the area. Um, there, the direct impacts not only to traffic and the local schools are tremendous, um, but the lack of authentic and honest communication from the applicant is very um, worrisome, especially given um, the safety components and the direct impacts to the schools. So I will leave there um, other comments regarding the impacts of the schools directly to other speakers as I'm sure they will focus on. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Collins, promote you next. Mr. Collins? Yes, sorry, I just got access. Uh, can you hear me now? No worries. Yes, I can. Great. Um, so I'm a neighbor. Uh, I live across the street from the church um, across Piney Branch. And while I have heard my fellow neighbors voice concerns about the traffic, my greater concern is about the traffic safety uh, and ensuring that if the school goes forward, that we make sure that a school zone speed limit uh, and appropriate traffic enforcement is used to make sure that kids getting dropping off at school or going back and forth from the metro and so forth uh, are safe. Um, I do know a lot of families in the neighborhood who would uh, val who value uh, a bilingual education and now have to travel a great deal of distance to do that for their kids, uh, including friends who uh, send their kids to the current location of this school. Um, so I, I think that the, the inclusion of this kind of option would be really great for our community, as long as we can make sure that the appropriate safety measures are taking place. And finally, um, I understand there's been some back and forth about whether or not the playground would be open to the community, uh, like the DCPS playgrounds are open to the community outside of school hours. I would suggest that if the school wants to endear itself to the community and be a good neighbor, it would follow that same practice uh, as uh, schools elsewhere on Piney Branch do. So those are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara, you're next. <clears throat> Barbara, are you there? Yes. Hi, can you hear me? I just got uh, put yes. in. Okay. Um, I just wanted to raise uh, two concerns I have about uh, moving Bethune into the location that it is proposed. Um, I think first and foremost, as a parent of students who attend Tacoma Elementary School, I'm very concerned about um, the resource drain that this will have on our, our neighborhood. This is a public school two blocks from this proposed location where students are going to be drawn. I mean, part of the purpose of Bethune moving, as I understand it, is to increase their enrollment. And that is likely, most likely to come from wherever location they are. So they are going to be pulling students and resources away from Tacoma, which is one of my main concerns. And in part because Tacoma, as well as Whittier, have done so much work over the past several years to improve their reputation academically and to really build strong communities because they've been able to recruit from the neighboring areas. And so that is one of my main concerns as a Tacoma ES parent. Um, in terms of the traffic safety issue, I'm sure others will speak to this as well, but one of my main concerns is that I, um, relates to the two blocks of Highland Avenue between 9th Street and Piney Branch, which is, I, I live on one of those blocks. Um, one of those blocks has no sidewalks. Um, this is a block, set of blocks that has no calming measures and uh, drivers often use it as a cut through to um, avoid things happening on Piney Branch and the changed um, traffic conditions um, that have happened recently there anyway. Uh, and this is also a place where students, it's a major point of egress for students. So students are walking in the street with parents um, because there are no sidewalks on part of this. And I'm very concerned about having a drop-off line on Piney Branch, backing up traffic, increasing the number of drivers who are coming down Highland Avenue at high rates of speed. So th that is the specific, those are the two specific current concerns I wanted to raise. Um, and I don't think that the school has any intention uh, of addressing any of these issues and certainly has not um, spoke, spoken to the community um, in good faith on this point. And I will make one last point, which is that my understanding from Bethune is that the church did not like advertise um, that they had space for rent. And so to the extent that there is a concern 
on the church's behalf that they need income. I do think that there are many, many potential um, other services that could be located at that location that could help the church get that revenue if that is an important consideration. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Sophie, you're next. Hi. <clears throat> yeah. Hi, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Yeah. Hi, I'm Anne Sophie. I live on Fifth and Sheridan, and I have two kids that attend Bethune at the current location. And the only reason why we had that score is because there are no bilingual options in the schools around us. We're zoned for Whittier. We would love to be there, but Whittier doesn't have any bilingual options and they don't have any intentions of getting it. Tech doesn't either. And right now we need to go about what is that two three miles to go to Bethune is pretty far so getting something that's in the neighborhood that's walkable and bikeable for kids would be a huge benefit to this neighborhood we have DCI close by we know we have plenty of families in this area that really value a bilingual education but we don't have a pathway to a bilingual um, education before fifth grade so having Bethune move into this area would really strengthen the options in this area for having a bilingual um, education. And then I would just like to second um, the other person who was on the call suggesting that the playground should be public. We live right next to Whittier or ac accessible to the public. We live next to Whittier. Their playground is not accessible to the public. So it would be great if Bethune moves into this location, if that could be one of the things that would be asked of them. Thank you. Welcome. Jenna, you're next. Jenna, are you there? <clears throat> Jenna? Hi. Hi, how are you? Not to get on. Hi, my name is Jenna Savasco. I am a parent of a Tacoma Elementary School student. Um, we submitted, um, I with about 30 other parents, submitted a letter to the Public Charter School Board, um, which we shared with you all um, when it was submitted and over the weekend. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we highlighted some of those points here um, for the public. Um, so the points that we made in the letter um, were generally um, that there should be a process for reviewing charter school establishments and relocation that considers holistically how public dollars are used. Um, the letter shared our concern about the impact this could have on the Byright schools, um, Tacoma Elementary School and Whittier Elementary School, um, underscoring that um, Whittier will be located outside of the neighborhood um, in the next couple of years, and so it could impact them more. Um, the letter also expresses concern about the speed um, of which this process um, took place. Um, and really, um, frankly, there was no time for public review um, and not a lot of public engagement. Um, and then finally, our letter echoes the concerns um, that we heard tonight um, in other settings about traffic safety and congestion on Piney Branch. Um, so um, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak tonight. Stephanie, you're next. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Stephanie, are you there? Stephanie, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry about that. This is Stephanie Hain. I have a child at Bethune as well, and I live in 4B. Um, I agree with Ann Sophie that having a bilingual school in the community will really benefit um, the area. The school, you know, not has had definitely communication issues, um, which as a parent, I am frustrated by as well. And I fully acknowledge that. Um, but I do want to just talk a little bit about the school um, very quickly. It does serve um, a population that in other spaces is not um, served as well. So there are a lot of Spanish speaking families. Um, we last year got a lot of immigrants because there was enrollment available at the school. We got people that were coming straight um, from 
South America, Central America, um, and they were able to enroll at Bethune and had an option where they felt that they were served. Um, so the school does offer you know, um, free lunch and free summer school. Um, so it's a really valuable resource for underserved populations. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Palmer, I don't have any other hands raised, so I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Great, thank you. I just have a few <clears throat> points to make with regard to the letter that we will be voting on tonight, um, which notes the challenges with the community engagement process for charter school relocation and the need for coordination and oversight for the siting of public charter schools. Mary McLeod Bethune Day Academy Public Charter School first notified the commission about this proposed relocation, which will bring at full enrollment 174 students as well as teachers and school staff <clears throat> to the new location on October 23rd. They filed their application to the Public Charter School Board on December 13th, 2023. The Public Charter School Board will vote regarding the proposed relocation next Monday, January 29th. This is a short time frame for meaningful community engagement and the opportunity to address community questions and concerns, even in the best of circumstances, but particularly given the commission's recess in December and the challenges that we've had with community engagement with the school. Commissioners have sought from the beginning to harmonize community feedback <clears throat> and the school's proposed relocation, recognizing that given the low public charter school standard for approval, the school will be coming to the neighborhood. Yet that harmonizing has not been possible because the school's communications with Advisory Neighborhood Commission 4B and the surrounding community have been confusing and seemingly designed to limit meaningful community engagement. As the relevant single member district commissioner, I've had to repeatedly press the school for engagement and information. The school has blamed commissioners, namely me, for its lack of community community engagement where A, it is not the commission's obligation to do outreach for the school, and B, commissioners have nonetheless engaged very actively with neighbors on this matter, and been for many neighbors the only reason they were aware of the proposal or any information and in meetings related to the proposal. The commission letter proposed here details these communications challenges and attaches all of the emails between the school and commissioners and highlights how the school has not meaningfully engaged specifically with the primary commission concern and request that the addition of a school with 174 students and staff requires a meaningful traffic study, including safety infrastructure and proposals to mitigate traffic safety issues, which the relocation is sure to create. The school has thus far refused to provide such a traffic study. The proposed letter requests the public charter school board acknowledge and require specific commitments from the school, including a memorandum of understanding with neighbors that would address traffic safety, among other issues. It also calls into question more broadly the lack of coordination and oversight by the public charter school board in the siting of public charter schools. And there's a note in the in the chat that the vote is February 26th, which is correct. Um, I would like to clarify that the hearing on this matter is January 29th, which is the opportunity for us to provide feedback. Um, and I'd also like to give Commissioner Yates the opportunity to say anything he'd like to say as the co-sponsor of this letter. Thank you, Commissioner Palmer. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my camera off because of my internet difficulties. Um, I, I wanna thank you for this well-authored resolution. It's very thorough and complete. I want to start by expressing my disappointment that the school, Mary McLeod Bethune Day Academy Charter School, chose not to join us tonight, um, despite being invited by email. Um, I'm also disappointed that our representative of the State Board of Education could not join us tonight to hear this important education facility discussion. Um, and I would ask that representatives of district government agencies identify them as such um, so that they can fully participate in the discussion because the Public Charter School Board came to another community meeting on this project. Um, and then when they were invited to discuss this project, left the community meeting um, rather than do so. Um, I did want to respond to some of the community concerns um, around the playground. I, of course, support opening the playground up. The school has already stated they have no intention of doing so. And I also want to recognize the uh, bilingual charter schools that are available in our community already, including DC Bilingual right across the street from 4B08 and CELA Public Charter School, which is located in 4B10. 
Um, the, I am someone who worked really hard on the traffic calming on um, Piney Branch Road after a fatality in front of another school. Um, we've seen repeated uh, tragic incidents um, around uh, um, school communities, including um, on Mississippi Avenue in Southeast in front of a DC uh, public school, a student who was hit and killed due to improper uh, pick up and drop off procedures at a KIPP school in Southeast. Um, these decisions are not without consequences. Um, and the public charter school board is the relevant authorizer being unable or unwilling to participate in oversight of this critical issue for children's safety is an abdication of their responsibility. And I hope our letter makes that clear. All right, thank you. Um, is there a motion? Commissioner Palmer, you're on mute. Yes, I move to approve the letter as presented. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Commissioner Gates, I can't hear you, see you. So Aye. I Thank you. I believe that's everyone. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we will move to the consent calendar. I I said I, my hand is up. I hopefully yes. you can see me. Yes, I saw you. I'm sorry. Okay, so we will now consider the consent <clears throat> uh, calendar. I'll read all of the titles, and if any of the commissioners need any of the items to be removed, please let me know. Go back to my thing. So we have resolution 4B240101, supporting and private, providing feedback on B25-0574, the Do Right by DC Tenants Amendment Act of 2023, Commissioner Palmer, Yates, Brooks, and Smith. We have resolution 4B240102, noting the history of requests and calling for installation of meaningful, meaningful traffic calming at the intersection of 5th Street Northwest and Underwood Street Northwest, Commissioner Smith, Palmer, Brooks, and Yates. And as we all know, consent calendar items are not discussed individually. They are posted on our website in advance of the meeting for everyone's review. And with that, I will take a motion to accept the consent calendar as presented. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, is there a second? Thank you, all in favor? Aye. Aye, that's everyone's hands. Thank you very much. So we have now uh, gotten through this agenda uh, and not bad timing, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, being that there's no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Everyone have a lovely evening and we'll see you next month. Thank you. Mm -hmm.